Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Apollo 8's Bill Anders lost in T-34 accident. M-700 Fury FAA certified for Fiki. FAA Reauthorization Act brings TFR correction. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Apollo 8's Bill Anders lost in T-34 accident. An astronaut who was part of what was then mankind's greatest adventure, the first flight to orbit the moon and return back, has died in an accident while flying a T-34. Bill Anders is credited with the famous Earthrise photo of the Earth coming up over the moon, taken aboard Apollo 8, and was confirmed to be the only occupant of the aircraft. Anders was 90 years old and his loss was confirmed by his son, Greg. The accident occurred Friday when his T-34 mentor reportedly went down in the water near Roche Harbor, Washington, northwest of Seattle. The aircraft was reported down at 1140 Pacific and that the aircraft had been flying from north to south when it was seen to go into the water near the north end of Jones Island in San Juan Channel. Anders only flew one space mission but led an extraordinary life. In 1964, Anders was selected by NASA as an astronaut with responsibilities for dosimetry, radiation effects, and environmental controls. He was backup pilot for the Gemini 11 and Apollo 11 flights and was aboard for Apollo 8, the first lunar orbit mission in December 1968. At last report, he had logged more than 6,000 hours flying time. After the break, Virgin Galactic completes 12th successful space flight. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Virgin Galactic completes 12th successful space flight. Virgin Galactic completed its second space flight of 2024 and 12th mission to date, carrying one researcher and three private space tourists. This Galactic 7 flight marks the company's seventh research mission with Virgin Galactic spaceship, again serving as a suborbital lab for space-based scientific research. On board Galactic 7 was Space Tourist 27, Tuva Atashever, a Turkish Space Agency astronaut and Axiom Mission 3 Backup Mission Specialist, Space Tourist 28, Andy Sadwani of California, Space Tourist 29, Irving Pergament of New York, and Space Tourist 30, Giorgio Menenti of Italy. TBM OPA's European Convention draws over two dozen TBMs. Last month's European Convention of the TBM Owners and Pilots Association attracted a wide customer base from its TBM aircraft product line, from private owners and operators to the French Air Force and French Army Aviation. Dyer was a co-sponsor of the annual gathering, supporting TBM OPA's commitment to the promotion of flight safety and operational efficiency, with some 1,190 airplanes delivered to date. A large Dyer team was present at the convention, led by Nicolas Chabert, the CEO of Dyer Aircraft, and Raphael Maitre, VP of Customer Support. B-29 Doc and B-25 Berlin Express hosting tour stop this month in Kansas City. 
The B-29 Dog History Restored Tour will next land at New Century Airport and in Gardner, Kansas, June 13th to 16th. The tour stop will include B-29 Doc, one of 1,644 B-29 Super Forges aircraft built by the Boeing Company in Wichita, Kansas, and B-25 Berlin Express, a B-25 Mitchell, which spent time at the North American Aviation B-25 Fairfax factory in Kansas City, Kansas. The tour stop hosted by the commemorative Air Force Heart of America Wing will include flight experience rides on B-25 Berlin Express and B-29 Doc. Hagerstown Aviation Museum taking on Fairchild XNQ-1 Navy Trainer. There's good news for the Hagerstown Aviation Museum with the news that, quote, the one and only 1947 Fairchild XNQ-1 Navy Trainer is being donated, end quote, to the facility. This airplane is reportedly one of only two examples ever produced and is in the process of flying from its current home in Texas to the place of its birth, Hagerstown, this Monday, June 10th. The Fairchild XNQ-1 was restored during the years 1983 and 1992 by Don and Ann Pellegrino in their farm workshop near Story City, Iowa. Ready for almost anything, M700 Fury FAA certified for Fiki. Piper has received flight into known icing or Fiki certification from the FAA for its M700 Fury. John Calcagno, president and CEO of Piper Aircraft, said, quote, the M700 Fury boasting a max cruise speed of 301 KTAS and a max range of 1,852 nautical miles includes some of the most advanced safety features in the industry. The certification of FIKI is a crucial part of the overall value proposition of the M700 Fury, as well as a key safety feature for the operator, end quote. The FIKI system comes standard on all M700 Fury aircraft and is an electromechanical expulsion de-icing system located on the tail as well as the leading edge of the wing. The Piper M700 Fury was certified in March 2024 and comes standard with the Halo Safety System featuring Garmin Emergency Autoland. International certifications for the M700 and FIKI are progressing as planned and on track for deliveries to those regions beginning in quarter 3, 2024. The six-seat M700 Fury is powered by a Pratt & Whitney PT6A52700 SHP engine. The aircraft has a maximum cruise speed of 301 KTAS and 557 kilometers an hour, a max range of 1,852 nautical miles, and a standard useful load of 2,320 pounds. After these messages, FAA Reauthorization Act brings TFR correction. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. FAA Reauthorization Act brings TFR correction. The recent FAA reauthorization brings a much-needed change to a long-running problem regarding airshow restrictions. In 2004, the Omnibus Spending Bill included a change that restricts flights by any non-approved aircraft within three miles of an NCAA, NFL, MLB, or NASCAR event. Initially, it was sold to the public as an anti-terror provision, but those in the know believed it was aimed at restricting banner tow operations more than an actual attack. For 20 years, that provision has vexed operators throughout the low-altitude general aviation sphere. The International Council of Air Shows touched base with Sam Graves while the FAA reauthorization was being drafted, aiming to fix the vexing TFR provision. As chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee in the U.S. House of Representatives, Graves was able to patch that irritation up as the act went to the House. 
New language requires the FAA to convene a meeting between the representatives of air shows and organizations that hold events in large stadiums ahead of time, figuring out scheduling conflicts related to TFRs issued for such sporting events. The law also specifically allows for the safe operation of air show aircraft during a sporting event, so long as the aircraft do not fly over the stadium itself or adjacent parking facilities. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.